Joining me today is Melissa Brock. And I think what's so incredible about this particular interview today is that we've done an interview and then the pandemic happened and everything shifted. So I really want to kind of get uh, the part two of this interview before part one is ever published. <laughs> so we're going to kind of rewind on all of this. And if you're not familiar with Melissa, her work is incredible. She is the founder of Barack Ballet. She's a choreographer. She's a former dancer at New York City Ballet. Um, I love your company. I've said that a million times. I've loved thank seeing you. your work. So thank, thank you. you for joining me today. Yes. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Let's talk a little bit about this because I spoke with you on the phone in February talking about a whole evening of work that you were doing called Memory House and the pandemic hit before I could ever publish the interview because you guys didn't have the opportunity to perform. So if you can kind of go back and talk about when that all got canceled and kind of what happened and what Memory House was about. Um, well, I mean, it was... It was like back in, um, actually before everything sh like officially shut down in LA, like mid-March, we, Barack Ballet, we were supposed to perform um, a, 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 as part of a program at uh, Royce Hall in mid-April, April 15th. It was going to be, it was called Ladies Night and Nigel Lithgow and Debbie Allen were producing the LA Dance Festival and it was gonna involve like all these different companies performing throughout, I think over like a course of a couple weeks in April. Sorry, my cat's about to make a Zoom appearance. I love it, bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> he loves to make his Zoom appearances. Um, so, you know, we were, th there was some difficulty with selling tickets for that program back in February, like we were, the other two directors of the other two companies that were programmed, um, we were having, you know, meetings with Nigel and, you know, we were hitting like mid February and we saw, or sorry, I guess it would have been, yeah, like around towards the end of February that ticket sales were just, you know, slow. And, you know, I was, we were saying, you know, with this virus kind of out there, um, it hadn't hit us immediately um, as hard until mid April, but I was like, people are really scared to, be in public and public spaces with a lot of people. And so we canceled, uh, or yeah, we all kind of agreed that to cancel that, um, sorry, to cancel that program before mid-March where everything just seemed to like, you know, just be shutting down. So back in February, we had to cancel that. And then mid-March happened and it was like, it was supposed to be a couple weeks that things were gonna like, you know, uh, we were going to chill out and see where things went. And then it was clear by, you know, beginning of April, it was clear that this was not, this was something that was going to stick around for a little while. Sorry, Mickey, come, come. I, you know, the this is the best part. I'm a cat owner. I have two cats. So this is I the understand. best cat in the world. His name is Mickles. Oh, so sweet. <laughs> I understand their need for attention and um, animals in the middle of a pandemic also. It's been interesting. I feel like I've ruined my cats because I can't leave the house anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, Mickey, okay, come on. Come, come, come. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, so, so you know, around like mid, uh, beginning to mid-April, it was clear that, you know, we, we were just going to have to pass or postpone Memory House till a time when people could enjoy it in the theater. Um, and it's an expensive production. So we need, when, when it is in a theater, we need to be able to fill the house. You know, we need, we can't have 50% capacity situations. Sometimes um, even 25% they're saying, and I'm yeah, like, no, no one not, can sustain that. It's, you can't sustain. And especially dance companies where, you know, it is, especially dance companies in LA where resources are thin and, you know, people, it's not like people scramble to like donate large amounts of money, sadly. To local dance companies here so you know we're lucky we've got a lot of support but it's just you know it has to make financial sense so so it's postponed memory house until a time when we can perform for you know full theaters again full audiences um, talk about the significance of memory house because i i loved um the description of it i think um it was going to be incredibly poignant and i think it was going to hit people emotionally yeah. Um, but for people who aren't familiar with it, tell us about the work. 
the word. Well, it, it's um, 2020 marks the 75th anniversary since the Holocaust and World War II, you know, ended. And so I wanted to do, you know, I've had this idea for a piece for several years um, set to Max Richter's Memory House album. So it was just going to be, the title of the piece was going to be the name, the, the same name as the, the album. And yeah, this, this album is just incredible. I love the music from beginning to end. And literally the piece is, is um, I created it literally to have the album run as is in order. Like it's, it is as the album is written mm -hmm. from beginning to end. And um, yeah, it's just a very, it, 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 you know, it's a more abstract, poetic um, interpretation of the Holocaust and also, you know, that time in the 40s, um, you know, just sort of capturing in an abstract way, the visuals, the, you know, the um, sort of like a time capsule, but like in an abstract way. I mean, it, it's, it's hard to explain to people just because I see it so vividly in my head, but you know, it's not like, it's not going to be like Schindler's List, the ballet. I mean, there's nothing literal about it. Um, but just taking the emotional, um, more poetic, if you could say, uh, qualities from that time period and sort of, um, you know, it's, I haven't pitched the piece in a while because it's been, you know, months. It's like I've sort of put it in on the back burner. So I'm really right. bad about verbalizing the pitch at this point but um but yeah it is it's 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 basically an abstract interpretation of of the holocaust and to commemorate that period in time so you've been able to pivot sort of a piece of this though haven't you in a short film that you're doing called breathe in if i'm correct yeah we wanted to do something like my board and i talked and we're like you know we definitely want to show something for june and obviously we you know being that we couldn't do a an actual, you know, theater appearance, and then also even outdoor stuff, you know, um, to gather people somewhere for like an outdoor event, you know, we were just like a little nervous. So they were like, let's just make a film. And so, you know, they encouraged me to make a film. And I was like, well, what is this film going to be? How is it going to look? Where are we going to do it? And so I was just thinking, I wasn't even really focused on Memory House or doing anything associated with it. But you know, I just recalled, you know, in Pan Pacific Park, which is where the Holocaust Museum of LA is located. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, wait, there's some really like just beautiful architectural gems. Like, first of all, the, the museum itself is a beautiful design. And Hagi Belsberg, uh, who is the architect that designed it, he was gonna, he is gonna be a collaborator on this new Fur Memory House. Like his, him and his team were on board. We were like, designing like this like modular set that was going to be part of the second second portion of the evening Amazing. um so it was just sort of like you know what we're not gonna this movie's not gonna be about the holocaust in any way shape or form but what we can do is utilize the design of the museum on the outside and the beautiful You're frozen. Um, and they're just like, you know what? We can make a really nice just dance-based film and it sort of celebrates our partnership with the museum and celebrates the partnership and, or the collaboration with Hagi. Um, and, and, and the piece could just be about what we're dealing with today, which many people say is probably the most challenging thing that we've had to deal with since World War II, mm -hmm. um, you know, certainly like one of the more disruptive society disrupting events since World War II. And, um, and, you know, that longing for freedom, you know, no one wants to be kept in their house. I mean, we're lucky we're not dealing, you know, I think what they had to deal with in World War II was way, way worse, yeah. but, you know, it's still challenging nonetheless. And so, you know, we're all longing for better days. And so that's kind of what I wanted the film to show is just, you know, including the museum, just based on its design and the atmosphere of, of, of its design and, and um, you know, what we were longing for better days today, like they longed for better days, you know, back, back then. So, 
So yeah. Did, did this challenge you as an artist? Because how much have you worked when it comes to the medium of film um, as a choreographer and a director? I haven't worked on, I mean, that was my first foray, like that was, yeah, the first time I had ever thought dance for film. I mean, I know a lot of choreographers have been doing, you know, filmed ballets and film dance and it just never really interested me. I just, I like live performance and I, I kind of just think for the stage, but obviously with COVID, it sort of forced me to, you know, I got to think, I got to make something else work if we're to still create some content at this time. And uh, so, yeah, so Breathe In was sort of like the first time I really had to picture like, you know, angles, how are we going to cut this some, from scene to scene, you know, like, how are we going to make it engaging, you know, and a little bit of a story, but I, I, I'm not, I'm not into spoon feeding my audience. So it's like, you know, how can we make this engaging and interesting? And there's a storyline there, but it's not, you know, not an actual story. Um, so you're not hitting them over the head with the story. Yeah. By any means. So I don't know. I mean, it came together really organically. I mean, as just when I, as soon as I just put my mind in that mode, it just sort of was coming together. And the woman that I work with, Selena Moschel, who's the company's videographer, she shoots our, our performances. She's, you know, a really gifted filmmaker in, in her own right. And so it was kind of cool because that five minute film just gave us, a, it was like a warm up, you know, it's like, it was a warm up for me for sure. And it was like a warm up for our working together as filmmakers. Um, and so now we're actually in the middle, this is why I'm so busy and I've got a lot on my plate right now is we're in the middle of making another film that we're gonna be shooting at the end of October. Oh, fantastic. Can you tease yeah. us what that's going to be? Well, I don't want to say too much. I mean, it's going to, we're going to, we're hopefully going to be able to, you know, drop it um, uh, at the end of November. Mm -hmm. We're hoping like, but you know, with post-production time, we'll see, but this is going to be much more, you know, it's going to be a higher production value film and it's going to be um, part of our, you know, usually we have a fall fundraiser in October. That's usually the time that we gather our biggest supporters and you know we throw a party and get people to support us for the season ahead so this film is sort of going to be um launched as part of our fall fundraiser and um and uh, to get people to support us you know to keep keep supporting us during this time so we can make content digitally and and then hopefully to get us onto the stage when the time comes again but um but yeah, so the, the, the piece itself, I don't want to, I don't want to re reveal too much, but it is going to be, it's 20 minutes long. We're doing like location shooting. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I think it's going to be, I, I'm really excited about it. I'm really, um, I love the music and uh, it's a great cast and the, the crew is a really talented team of individuals and um, yeah, you'll, you'll have to. We'll make sure you know it's all out people have to to check it out it will not be free so whereas breathe it's a fundraiser. In, <laughs> exactly so breathe in was you know a five minute film it, it wasn't too expensive to make so you know we wanted it to be for all and but this is you know this film is is kind of like our season so you know this is this is going to be if you want if this is something you want to see you know for all fall, for our fall fundraiser there's going to be tears um you know, with some perks along with the re reveal of the of the film, but then we'll be running it for a couple weeks privately. And so if people want to watch like a pay-per-view kind of thing. Um, That's great. Yeah, and and Breathe In's going to be a part of that Santa Monica College event coming up October 9th and 10th, correct? Yes, for Grace and Grit, yeah. So I know that people can go and um, enjoy the drive-in event. They have two showings on October 9th and 10th. So I think there's a 7.30 and a 10.30 show. I kind of like it. You can do the late show. Yeah, I know. I'll, uh, I'll definitely be there. <laughs> 10.30 <laughs> is like past my bedtime, but. <laughs> no, but it's exciting. It's, a, it's an exciting way to be able to see your work in, in a different I'm light. Really, yeah, it is pretty cool. I'm very excited that West Side Ballet is creating this forum, um, you know, for, for the school and for, you know, other companies that they support because, you know, Westside is our home. That's where we rehearse whenever we're getting ready for anything. 
um, for the past several years. So and you're a homegrown baby from West Side Ballet. Yeah, you, you were school. there when you're itty bitty, right? Yeah, Yvonne and Rosemary were my mentors and teachers growing up. And yeah, that school is literally like my childhood home. And so to be teaching there now, it's, it's really special. It's, and it's the school I feel is as strong as it's ever been. You know, everybody, the students, the work ethic there is just so great and so much talent. And it's exciting to be a teacher there right now. We've got a lot of good crop of kids. Yeah. I, I want to know just kind of final thoughts in terms of 2020, because this has challenged us all, but I feel like it's been tremendously challenging for the arts and when it comes to government support, it's not there. Mm -hmm. um, how do you think the arts will come through 2020 and beyond? Because sometimes through tragedy and hardship comes the most beautiful art. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, there's something to be said for being forced to think differently and, you know, getting pushed out of your comfort zone. So I think for, you know, I certainly think, you know, for as far as digital and dance goes, I mean, I think we are going to see some really exciting things be born from this, you know, whole challenging situation. I mean, I definitely for me, I mean, you know, I mean, should this next film be, you know, as successful and well received as Breathe In was, I mean, it's opened doors for me as like a dance, you know, slash filmmaker. Um, it's certainly something that I want to kind of continue to pursue, make it part of Barack Ballet's, you know, uh, repertoire, you know, maybe put out an annual film. Um, so, you know, I definitely think it's opening doors creatively, although, you know, it's for a lot of companies and studios, it's when you're not making money and you have overhead to pay, I mean, it's sadly going to be closing some doors in mm -hmm. that regard. And, um, you know, I mean, as far as West Side, I mean, they're just, they're just such a staple institution. Um, you know, I mean, just not only for students, you know, adults and children alike, but, you know, what they do for, you know, companies like mine, and there's many other companies and, uh, you know, nonprofits that they support, you know, that they open their doors to and offer their space for free. Um, so other dance institutions, you know, local dance institutions can grow and share what they have, you know, share what they want to share with the community. So they're really like a pillar um, in the dance community. They certainly are. And we look forward to everyone getting back to the studio, back on stage as soon as possible, but safely, of course. But in the meantime, we will see you <laughs> at Grace and Grit October 9th and 10th. Yes, you will. Excellent. Always good to talk with you, Melissa. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Kristen. You bet.